Welcome back to the mountain bike build series. I got my magic wand here and presto change it. We're gonna weld on some seat stays. Let's get into it. So my name is Joe. Welcome to the, welcome to the show. Uh, I make Cobra frame building tools in this shop, but I also make YouTube videos like this mountain bike build series. And so uh, if you've been following, you would have seen the design, all the steps in picking the tubes, cutting the tubes, bending the tubes, prepping the tubes, welding the tubes. And uh, now we're to the point where these are the final of the main tubes of the bike, the seat stays, the upper rear tubes. And so there's like other little bits and bobs that go in here, but we're in the very home stretch now. And uh, so what, what you saw in the last video where we left off, I said I needed to drill little vent holes and you can see those right here in the dropouts. So that's where the chainstay meets up. And then up here uh, at the, at the seat, seat tube. So this way, and then also I said I had to relieve these. So these cuts had uh, this shape to them, but I, I came in and I did this little relief. I just used, you know, grinders and stuff. And I did, you know, about 10 times back and forth to the grinder, you know, guess and check until I had it pretty dang close. And so now this sits on here uh, pretty nicely. And the, the gap around the bottom is nice and tight and it fits well. Uh, whereas previously, of course, there was interference between this tube and this weld and the bottom of this tube. So they fit up nice now and I think they're ready to be welded. The frame building fixture is used to hold the discrete parts of the frame before they are unified via welding. First, they're just loose pieces and then we weld them together so they become one piece. And uh, so you would like ideally to have little like arms and holders and V blocks and stuff so that I could, instead of just setting this in here and holding it myself, it would hold itself. That would be great. I never made attachments for this frame fixture to do that. And because uh, these are sort of complicated cuts here and they fit tight, I can kind of hold it in here. It's sort of self-registering. So you have to be careful uh, that you actually get it where it needs to be, but you can feel when it's in position. And so that's the way I'm gonna do this. And you'd really like to have three or four hands for this. That's kind of the problem. But I can tell that this is sitting pretty nicely in here. And uh, I'll just take a look at my fit ups and then I'll tack it. I was trying to fuse these together without filler, but uh, I was not having luck with that. So I stopped before I made it worse. I'm gonna come in with filler now and try and bridge those together. I'm having a little bit of a uh, challenge getting the tacks that I want the way that I want them on here. You know, of course, this is very heavy and absorbs a lot of heat. This is very light, doesn't absorb much heat at all. You gotta point all of your heat into this, basically. And uh, it can be tricky to get a nice looking tack without burning a hole in this that's balanced and all that. So, you know, uh, I'm just being very careful when it's not going the way I want and I can't get it. I just kind of stop, get out of there, uh, reapproach it. You know, I'm, I'm kind of awkwardly in space. I'm, obviously, I'm not the best welder ever and um, it's a little bit weird and fussy, so I'm just, uh, you know, it's a little bit tricky, but also I'm just being real careful. Like, if it starts to go south, just get out of there, come back to it fresh, and um, this shouldn't be that big of a deal, but you always need to be real careful, uh, especially if you're awkward, and especially if there's a big thickness differential. The thick, heavy thing is gonna take all the heat, and the other thing is gonna wanna burn away. The frame fixture stand can rotate, and I know some frame fixture stands can also kind of tilt in and out. This would be a really nice time to have that tilt. I can lay it a little bit back, you know, 20 degrees or something would be awesome for where I'm at. It's not a big deal. A better welder wouldn't care. 
uh, so still really accessible, but you can always do a little bit better work when you're more comfortable. I have uh, at least two tacks on either end of these tubes. I, I don't have a whole strategy worked out about exactly where, exactly what kind of tacks, etc. But uh, I think that these are pretty well in place where I want them now. Pull it out of the frame fixture so that I can sit down to be more comfortable and so that I can spin the frame all around as I'm welding out these joints. Uh, it, it would really suck some of these to try and do them in the frame fixture uh, and I'd be standing. So I definitely want to pull it out of here just so that I can focus and get close and comfortable. You've heard me say this in the series. This is exciting when you see a new a new element to the frame. This is the shape of a bicycle frame, a diamond frame, a safety frame. You know, I think they started making diamond frames in like 1890 and uh, it's a good design. We've held on to it for a long time. Uh, but now, you know, after we do this weld, we're gonna put in a bridge and we're gonna put in uh, just some brazons and shit and then, uh, we're off to the races, let's spray this thing up. So uh, as I pull it out, I'm just looking, uh, you know, I was self fixturing these. I was holding these based on their miters and it's possible you have them a little bit out of place and then uh, from where you're seeing it in the fixture, it looks good, but then you pull it out and you see there's a whole big gap. And uh, no, I got pretty tight fit up. It looks pretty good. I think I got these where I want them. I feel good about that. And uh, not one of them is, is so much higher than the other one on the stay, uh, on the seat tube. So I feel good about where these are at. So you've seen me weld most of the bike frame in my park repair stand, my bicycle repair stand. And uh, that's great because it's really flexible and stuff. But here, if I just set it on the table and put some magnets on it, uh, I, I, can, I can get access to parts of these welds. And so uh, I'm just gonna try doing that. What's nice about that is it's pretty easy to set up. It's pretty stable. And then, uh, you know, the argon gas isn't just like, you know, there isn't some like turbulence uh, swirling of air, it's on a table. And so you have a flat surface to rest on and you can rest your hand out here. And there's nice things about that. So I'm just trying different stuff, uh, seeing how it goes. And so I'm gonna weld these right on the table. The, the parts that I can access easily. Welding here on the table is working out for me. Things are going pretty well. Uh, the, the, you know, the welds are looking okay. I had a little hole somewhere that I filled in pretty easily and um, you know, just working my way around. Uh, a big part of what makes these tricky is the thickness differential. This is thick and heavy, this is thin, but also you gotta constantly change your torch angle. You know, you're like, where you're feeding from, that angle is changing rapidly as you wrap around. Uh, where your head is with your, you know, so you can see your line of sight is constantly changing. You know, you can only wrap uh, a couple, you know, a couple pulses or, uh, you know, quarter of an inch or something before you significantly need to change uh, your face to the part, your torch tip, you know, your tungsten to the part, and your filler rod. And so because these things are, are changing so quickly, uh, it really is kind of tricky to, to keep up with that speed while you're also managing to not burn holes, while you're also managing to have a consistent look and an even bead spacing and all these things. And um, you know, the more you do it, the easier it gets, but this is, this is really tricky for that sort of reason. Now, when you look at, for instance, the head tube down tube joint, uh, that one there, you have the same phenomena, but at a much slower rate and there's less of a thickness differential. And so comparatively, it's a lot easier uh, in those regards to get a nice smooth weld in that joint. Uh, also in the rear end of the bike is the worst in terms of stuff being in your way because my line of sight to this joint, it wouldn't be that hard to weld this if this tube wasn't in my way. But now I wanna see it's in my way. I wanna get close. I can't you know, flip my hood down or I, I can't get my face here because of this. Same thing is true when you're in welding in here and up in here and in the rear end, if you build from front to back, 
or wherever it is, when you get close to finishing, there's just so many tubes around, it can be kind of awkward trying to get just where you can see a straight line of sight to what you want. There might be a bunch of stuff in the in the way between you and the part. I accidentally kicked on my foot pedal here. I'm just not close enough. I can't really see what I'm doing. If I sit all the way back here, I feel like I, it's kind of hard to tell what I'm doing. I'd like to be closer, I guess. Maybe I need a, a magnifier. You can get a cheater lens that goes in here uh, in, the, in the glass and it'll magnify what you're looking at. That might be helpful in a situation like this. So where I started welding this out on the table here, I had pretty good access to what I was doing and now it's getting into more of the normal. Uh, I need the flexibility of this stand in order to get what I wanted. So welding on the table had the benefit of being initially quick to set up. I just set it on there and put some magnets to stabilize. Now it's worth taking the time to get it, you know, sort of oriented where I want for each little section of stitch so that I can actually be comfortable. So I got my, uh, my tungsten stuck there for a second and then the tube kind of burned away. That's not something, I, I don't think I'm going to struggle too much filling that back in, but uh, you know that stuff will happen pretty easy on you. When you scrub it with a stainless, stainless brush, you can get rid of some of the impurities. You get a little bit of sootiness and stuff when you, when you screw up and you dip your tungsten or, uh, or you know if there's, if there's atmosphere inside of this tube that's kind of like uh, flowing out of the tube through these little cracks and uh, you know disturbing your your shielding gas or something so I like scrubbing it off before I light up again uh, it gives you a little cleaner work surface so I was able to fill that in and then start wrapping around with pretty good success didn't have too much trouble with that So I finished welding out the ends of the seat stays to where they meet up with the dropout and where they overlap onto the chain stays. I mean, it's frustrating, right? Like, you know, stuff's in your way. Today it's very hot in the shop. I'm not as good of a welder as I would like to be, but I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist about some things. Of course, I want my welds to be strong and I want them to look good, but you know, I'm just not capable of all that. So it can be frustrating and then stuff's in your way and you're sort of contorted or you can't really see as well as you would like. but. Um, you know, I managed to get it done. A couple times I'd burn a little hole and then I'd have to fill it up again, but it never, uh, sometimes when you start to burn a hole and then you're like, oh God, then you start to try and fill in that hole. It's like a runaway freight train. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And I, I didn't have any of those issues. You know, when I'd burn a little bit of a hole, I'd kind of stop and I'd be okay, flip my hood and then I'd get it right and I'd get back on course. So that's good. Now when it comes up here, we got to move into these, these seat stays and, uh, I'm hopeful about these. These are typically one of the hardest parts of the bike, but I've typically made road bikes and like, you know, cross and gravelly and touring and rando bikes and that sort of thing, you know, skinnier tire bikes. When you have fatter tires, uh, then you, you're fitting a bigger tire, you put a bend in here, and now this tube is coming in from like wider points rather than coming in at like straight in. And so we have a much bigger gap here between the tubes than what I'm used to on other bikes. And so I think comparatively, this part of it will be a lot easier to weld. And then uh, these are a little bit heavier wall thickness than some of the tubes that I've used on like road type bikes. Additionally, because the frame is more of like a compact geometry and the top tube slopes down so much, this angle between the seat tube and the seat stays, this interior angle here, 
is uh, not nearly as tight as it is on some road bikes and stuff. So comparatively speaking, I have pretty good weld access. Also, uh, the diameter of the seat tube, this is an inch and three eighths or 35 millimeter um, uh, tube right here, which means that these tubes, there's, there's more room for them to sit on here. They don't need to overlap each other or be quite as close to each other. And so for all these reasons combined, this is still probably going to suck to weld, but it's going to be so much easier than some of the most difficult setups that I've seen on some of the like road type bikes I've welded. So I slid a, a heat sink up inside of here to absorb the extra heat because when you're welding that extra heat and uh, if, if you know if you distort this too much then when when you try and slide a seat post in later the fit is all screwy right and so we're gonna go in and we're gonna open this up and clean this up with a reamer anyway and the reamer will really true up the inside surface bring it to finish diameter however uh, the le the least amount of wear that we can put on the reamer the better and uh, you know the more round we can keep this the better so uh, it's easier on our cutting tools and it should be faster and easier to ream if it stays nice and round and so we put in the heat sink and it should make that back side of the weld a lot cleaner and uh, nicer also gives you a little more control if you're welding on real thin stuff here it's already chunky enough stuff I don't I don't think that would be the issue for me primarily but uh, just you know Take, taking it easy on our cutting tools later is the goal, really. Like I mentioned before, if you just use a normal repair stand, there's a lot of things that could be improved about that. And one of them is that this is as low as I can get it. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> it's really awkward. You would like to be able to have a very wide range of adjustment, including if I'm welding on the top side of this, uh, I should be able to hold, you know, the frame pretty low so that I can be working, you know, at a comfortable height. Sometimes you got to grab it by like, you know, the down tube, or even if you're holding it by the top tube, um, this, this is too high for a low position, so. So I welded all the way around the, what do you say, the drive side and closed that up. Uh, not the prettiest welds ever, should be totally strong enough from what I can tell. Um, you know, these are just, these are more difficult to get at. It's not that it's um, the most difficult thing to weld, period, it's just harder to get at. And as bike frame welders, uh, you, you tend, you know, bike frame welders tend to be spoiled. Um, usually you can get in a pretty comfortable position, you can see what you're doing. Uh, you know, imagine, you know, if you were welding a, a boiler or some sort of frame or whatever, you know, you need to be somewhere or in the, in the podcast that I've been doing, uh, the Shut Up and Build Bikes podcast, we're talking to people and, you know, Wade from Vulture Cycles is talking about in aerospace, a lot of times he can't even see the weld, it's behind somewhere, he's got to use a mirror and he's looking at the reflection of it in the mirror or uh, he's welding blind around a corner and some of that stuff needs to pass inspection for aerospace and it gets dye penetrant inspected or it gets uh, x-rayed or something and that's a whole other level. So I don't really have any right to complain about this but from where I am, I'm not that good at welding and on the ones that I can get better access at, it's like not too hard. And you get into the rear end here where everything is in your way, you can't see around corners, you gotta constantly reposition. Uh, it, it gets to be more frustrating and so just you know, on a hot day like this, I just gotta try and uh, you know, stay focused, stay positive, keep my cool, and it's really, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but it can be frustrating when you're in the middle of it, for sure. So, you know, the whole trick is like getting to where you can see what you're doing and you're kind of comfortable and you can wrap a little ways before you get out of your position and out of your, you know, ability to do it or your comfort zone. I tried a couple positions where I was like, yeah, this doesn't really work, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I think this works. And so, you know, as you got more practice doing this, I think you would get more of a memory or an intuition about you know, what 
how you need to flip it next to get it the next stitch and whatever. And for me, it's like trial and error. And it's like, nope, doesn't work, doesn't work, kind of sucks. Oh, okay, I can kind of see it from here. So this is how I'm gonna try and attack this stretch. I'm not sure if I'll go over with the filler hand or if I'll come from underneath. I'll probably go over for just a short stitch and then I might need to reposition completely by the time I get over here. The welds don't look spectacular or anything, but I, I got them. They're done, uh, I, you know, good enough. Uh, you know, if I was gonna sell bikes to the public, I would just I would just sit down and practice welding a lot more. And uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd probably make a bunch of bikes before I was really uh, comfortable. You know, I, I'd want them to be good. I'd want, you know, anything I was shipping out the door for other people they paid money for, I'd want it to be good. But uh, this is for me, this is for learning, and this is for sharing things. Uh, with anyone who's interested and I feel I feel like these are acceptable for the task at hand the, the heat sink is so hot still so <laughs> there we go uh, you know pull this out and now the inside of this still looks pretty clean and pretty smooth and I don't think it would necessarily look quite that nice on the inside if I hadn't used that heat sink so that's the whole point of that is just to keep it nice and round so that when I do run my my cutting tool in there I'm not beating it up if you buy a nice helical reamer that's the right size for uh, whatever seat post diameter that might be a couple hundred bucks like an odd size reamer um, or whatever you're using you know your cutting tools are kind of nice and you don't you don't want to beat up on them same thing is true with the bottom bracket even if you buy like the part tool company um, you know taps and facers and reamers and stuff it's uh, it's hard on the tools if you're cutting through uh, weld or work hardened material so Clemmy is my lead finish welder but she damaged her welding hood and her replacement didn't show up in time so we had to keep her outside here so she wouldn't hurt her little eyes but uh, this is looking awesome. Uh, all the main tubes of the bike are together. We got a little seat stay bridge. That's gonna come in next. We gotta get some brazons in here, but uh, all in all, it's looking pretty sweet.